Baker is an HBO Max series spin-off of last year's The Suicide Squad, created by James Gunn, the mind behind that movie. He also wrote all episodes and directed most of them. It follows the titular Peacemaker, a character who is probably as close to a villain in that movie without actually being the villain, and now they're going to try to make him sympathetic. I have not seen a lot of the Marvel spin-off shows, I've just gotten Disney+. Plus. All I've seen thus far is WandaVision and a couple episodes of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Comparison. Peacemaker is not as good as WandaVision, but it's much better than what I've seen in The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah, as it turns out, that character can be made to someone likable enough to put at the center of an entire show. It goes into his upbringing that shows that he's had his attitude ingrained into him by his abusive father. And it goes deep into the emotional toll it takes on him. You wouldn't expect John Cena of all people to be a serious actor for the more emotional scenes, but he is surprisingly good. It mostly has the same dark humor and violent action that made me like the movie so much, but unfortunately, some of the edgier humor in this one can be hit and miss. Though I liked the show from the beginning, I found that I liked it a little better as it went on, I guess maybe when the team was fully coming together. When the banter is good, it's really good. This shows promise for DC Universe TV spin-offs, albeit for a much older crowd than that Disney stuff. Not specifically a more mature crowd though. It's not perfect, it's not as good as the movie, but it's a whole lot of fun. presentation will continue following this brief intermission. Even if one of them survives, what will be left? The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. After you stop screaming, you'll start talking about it. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the sequel. Obviously, because it doesn't have the the, so therefore anybody who mistakes this for the original is stupid. Basically, the reverse of The Suicide Squad, or less noticeable, Fast and Furious. Anyway, I've only seen the original. None of the other sequels or remakes, just this one. And only because it just dropped on Netflix and I can talk about it. So, this movie apparently went through a lot of rewrites and changed directors and did poorly at test screenings, so they just sold it to Netflix where it was not screened for critics. That being said, it actually wasn't as bad as I was expecting. It's not good, but it's not completely worthless. It takes place decades after the original, like the new Halloween. More on that later. A bunch of young people come to the town the original took place in, which is now a ghost town, to try to gentrify it. It's never really explained what they do that gives them that kind of pull. Anyway, spoiler, it doesn't work. Leatherface comes for them all, but the rest of the family is nowhere to be found. At the beginning, Leatherface is with some senile old woman who thinks she runs an abandoned orphanage and she dies and he wears her face to kill the people he blames for her death. It feels like there should be some previous sequels explaining what's going on between him and her, but this movie apparently retconned all the sequels. First, the positives. This doesn't skimp on the kills. It's very violent and gruesome. There's even one scene where an entire busload of people is massacred one after the other. There's no complaints in that regard, and there are even a few of them that are shown in a somewhat suspenseful way. I mean, the characters aren't really deep enough for me to really feel for them, but, you know, there was, there was something there. I also like the beginning where they go into a convenience store where we can see that they're selling merchandise about the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Kinda seems realistic that they would be capitalizing on the crime decades later. For a long while I was wondering why this was getting such a mixed reception. Or at least I would've if I didn't watch the trailer and see this. Try anything and you cancel, bro. Oh, fuck. And so I was thinking this is probably gonna start sucking eventually. And I was right. I guess I can't really think of a particular place where the suck started, but it's just that most of the things that I really hated about it happened at some point in the second half. Case in point. Try anything and you cancel, bro. Sure, you don't wanna throw in an attack helicopter joke in there as well? Also, that's like the only joke in the entire movie. The vast majority is dark and serious and then all of a sudden there's one line that feels like it could have been from the worst film in the scary movie franchise. Which transitions to my main complaint here. Everyone is unlikable and makes stupid decisions that get them killed. Here's a notable example, at least for me because it left me a little confused as to what was going on. So just before the bus massacre I mentioned, just before... Try anything and you cancel, bro. The bus is driving away from Leatherface but the driver doesn't know why they're leaving. And then they hear the chainsaw scraping against the bus. And then the bus stops. 
and then the driver stupidly gets out to investigate the sound. You can probably guess what happens next. I figured he'd come across something that Leatherface might have cut that caused the bus to stop, but since they never explained that, I realized that the driver must have pulled over, for the sole purpose of investigating the sound that the passengers were screaming for him to get away from. It also tries to be even more like the Halloween reboot by bringing back the lone survivor of the first movie. Not the original actress because she apparently passed away a few years ago, but anyway she's pretty much the same role as Laurie Strode. She's traumatized and wants revenge for the incident. Except unlike her, she's in a very small role and is completely worthless. They turned her into an idiot. And a total piece of shit who's willing to risk two innocent lives just for an attempt to kill Leatherface to live out her revenge fancy. And when she has the chance, she doesn't even try. For movies that I know I'm going to see anyway, I usually avoid reviews for the most part until I see it. But one of the things I read anyway before was a tweet saying that it's against gun violence until the end when it randomly isn't anymore. See, one character is the survivor of a school shooting and spends most of the movie traumatized and afraid of firearms until she finally tries to fight light a face off with a shotgun. And I've seen a lot of other people on Twitter talking about this topic since then. I disagree with this reading because it gives the movie too much credit. Even at the beginning, they did not try to make any kind of statement whatsoever. They just wanted her to be traumatized and have her overcome it at the end. The fact that it was a school shooting was probably just, school shootings are a hot button topic right now. How can we exploit that to make people feel disturbed? 911. Oh. I said 911. Well, at least they were consistent. Oh yeah, and the ending's a real groaner as well. Despite all this, the movie is still good if you just want to watch a dumb slasher flick where people get murdered in many gory ways. If only the rest of it wasn't so stupid. Deep in the heart of Texas. Try anything you cancel, bro. Cancel, bro.